turning the boat short round. Proceeding down a narrow aisle like we're going down now, at some point you're going to need to turn the boat round and come back out again. This yacht, she's 41 foot long, she can easily turn, give or take a couple of feet either side of that. So we're going to go down this aisle and we're going to turn around, we're going to make good use of our prop kick and what elements we've got in our favour. So be conscious of the tide, be conscious of the wind. Today, we've got a lovely little crosswind blowing across the boat. To me, that tells me that that's going to hinder the initial part of the turn, but once I get the bow of the boat through, it'll actually flick the bow around, it'll be in my favour. So, going to take it down the aisle now, just left of centre. Be aware that because my prop kick kicks the stern to port, this yacht's favourite turn will always be to starboard. So look for a nice wide spot, nice and gentle, check your speed off to the side, into neutral, here we go, then it's wheel hard over, there she goes, she's starting to turn, and as she moves gently across the aisle, we're going to give her a burst of stern on the engine. That puts the brakes on, and when the boat is stationary, my prop kick will walk the stern of the boat to port. As she comes to a halt, into neutral, give her a burst ahead, keeping the wheel hard over to starboard. As she starts to move, stop, into neutral. Let's go astern. Look to the side, there's my prop kick. As soon as she starts to move, you must go to neutral. She spins on a keel. You just work around with the engine. There we go. Always allow a little pause when you're using the gears. Love your gearbox. Little burst astern. Now, if you're getting a little bit too far in one direction and you need to go back a bit, centre the wheel. There we go. Go straight back. Give it a little burst ahead. Let's put some prop wash over that rudder. Round she comes. Ease the power. Out we go. Easy. Remember with prop kick that you need to allow for that when you're manoeuvring the boat down a narrow aisle. If I go down this aisle and I need to stop the boat, when I stop the boat, the prop kick is going to kick the stern of the boat that way. So before I go into that manoeuvre, I need to ease the bow of the boat to port to compensate for that. 10, 15 degrees. Steadier up. Now I go astern. She's coming to a halt, the scenery stopped moving, my prop kick's moving across, starting to go backwards, I've got my steerage back. And I'm going back in a straight line. We've shown you how to bring the boat alongside a linear pontoon, nice and straightforward. Very often you'll be bringing your boat alongside a finger pontoon like we have here for instance. In doing that, invariably you've got a neighbour to look after, so preparation is key to this one make sure you're fended up on both sides. Both sides, just in case you have to use plan B. Plan A, however, will invariably be to reverse the boat into its berth. Now, if you reverse the boat into its berth, come down the aisle like that, standing at the stern, you've got a lovely visibility into the berth where you want to bring her in. And as that berth starts to open up, she swings in, and use that swing to just bring her in, it lays her alongside, spring round off, get that spring on, motor gently ahead, put her into the holding position, job done. With bringing the boat into a finger pontoon like this, there's nothing wrong with bringing it in bow first, and in doing so, make sure she's all nicely fended up, in she comes, you swing her in, and you use the momentum of that turn to lay the boat alongside the pontoon. Now, with models, that's nice and straightforward. With a boat that's 41 feet long, you've got to remember that you're going to lose sight of where the bow is in relation to the pontoon. So you need someone on the bow calling distance, not telling you to go back, 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 but giving you a countdown, five metres, four metres, three metres, two metres. That sort of information is so vital to the skipper because he's got this mental picture of what's going on, what he wants to achieve, she wants to achieve. Give him a countdown, he stands a much better chance of achieving it over too quickly because your neighbour's not going to talk to you otherwise. When you come out, when the mast gets in line with the end of the pontoon, that's the point when you want to be thinking about putting the wheel over. As she comes out, check that quarter, have someone with a roving fender there by all means, and when she swings clear, burst on the engine, put some more prop wash across that rudder, off you go. Let's go sailing. Reversing into a berth 
gives you much more control in most circumstances. Main reason being everything is happening right in front of me just a few feet away. But it's two hands on the wheel and just go straight down the aisle. My berth's over there and before I start to turn in, wait for that berth to open up and I can see into it before I start turning. Don't forget, the back of the boat, the stern of the boat moves a little bit, the bow of the boat will swing quite a lot. So ease the power. There's my berth over there. Just staying just left of centre. And I'm going to use the swing of the turn to lay the boat alongside. Here we go. Stand by with the spring. Berth's opening up. Let's put the wheel over. <coughs> I'm aiming at the middle. As I close the middle, I switch aim towards the end. Into neutral. Ready to put the brakes on. Touch your head. Spring on. Spring on. Wheel away from the pontoon. I'm now going to put her into the holding position and bring her alongside. And we're in. Downwind sailing, this is when the wind's going to start to come behind the boat and we set our sails out further. Now with downwind sailing, it always feels a little calmer because the relative wind, the speed that you're moving, is about the same. Having said that, downwind sailing is when jibing can occur. Now to prevent that, we rig a preventer on our boom to prevent the jibe. This is how we do it. Can you pass me the, the preventer line? There we go. I'm going to step out of the cockpit, so now's a really good time to stick on my safety line. I prevent a line, a nice strong line. This is going to be made fast to the boom, to a cleat forward, and made fast back there. Lead the preventer line outside of everything, including the jib sheets. Now, the point of sail the boat's on at the moment it's a nice beam reach, so we're nice and safe, there's no chance she's going to jive. Outside of everything, through this very handy mooring cleat, then back we go to the cleat at the back. There's our preventer line, all ready for action. OK, we're now going to turn the boat to a more downwind position. When you alter your course, you alter your sail settings. So we're going to ease our sails out and our preventer's going to come into its own there. OK, Alice, when you're ready, take it a broad reach on this, the starboard tack, please. Here we are on broad reach, starboard tack. Nicely done, Alice. We're now going to take the boat through a jibe. It's going to be a controlled jibe. So to do that, the routine is standby to jibe from the helmsman. That gets everybody in the boat aware. The next step, centre the main sheet. Could you centre the main sheet, please, Elizabeth? There we go. The main sheet has been centred. We've got the boom in towards the centre of the boat. That limits the amount that it can flick across. Much safer. OK, when you're Alice, jibe ho. Face jibe. Ready? Jibe ho. Over she goes. When the mainsail goes across, ease the main sheet out. Send it across nice and sweetly. Mind the preventer. That's lovely. Set it on the other side. We can now set the preventer on the starboard side and then go about sorting out the jib. With jibing, it's all about looking after the mainsail. We look after the genoa at the end.